What's going on guys? Today we're going to learn about component states in Adobe XD. All right, so I'm on the uh, adobe.com uh, features page for Adobe XD. This is where the team will publish all the latest features. It goes all the way back from pretty far back here. Um, but you can see every month that uh, the XD team is releasing new features and new uh, functionality in the software that allows you to do a lot more. So, you know, here's time transitions, uh, integration with Illustrator, a bunch of stuff. So uh, you can kind of dig through this and really see all the different um, awesome capabilities that they've added. Uh, but today I'm really excited to talk about this one right here, which is uh, component states. This is a big deal for a lot of designers. They released this uh, November, early November. And I think that this is something that a lot of designers have wanted for a while. I know I have. Uh, just because it's kind of nice to have that, the ability to actually show a prototype and what a hover effect might look like. Anyways, let's actually jump into Adobe XD so we can take a look at what component states are and how we can create them in the software. All right, so we're here in XD and I thought before we actually start creating component states, it'd be wise if we actually just talked a little bit about, you know, what are components and what are states? Because um, it can be a little confusing if you've never really like delved into this. So I sort of defined what I believe to be the definition of components, but please let me know in the comments if you have maybe a, a different definition or maybe you found a better one. So here it goes. Components are reusable design elements that help to maintain visual and behavioral consistency across an application or digital product. So that could be a website, it could be an app, really anything digital that you're seeing on the screen. And then I also found this uh, definition from Google Material Designer that I thought was really good. It says here, States are visual representations used to communicate the status of a component or interactive element. Essentially, a component can have multiple states. So for instance, let me just scroll down here and show you what I'm talking about. All right, so for lack of a better example, this is what I came up with. Um, your components basically are essentially a folder that house different instances or different uh, states. So in this case, you'll have your default, your hover, and your tap. So these all live within this little component guy right here. Isn't he adorable? So let's take a quick look at an example of a component. So if I come down here, you can kind of see I laid out three buttons, but really it's all just one button with multiple states. So this would be our default state. It's kind of like an outline ghosted button. And then you have your hover state, which is, you know, the same button, but it's filled in with white and it has an arrow that appeared. If I were to click this uh, hover state button, uh, perhaps the color goes to gray maybe moves down a few pixels so it looks like it was pressed. And typically in the past, you kind of had to lay things out this way. You had to kind of duplicate your component, move it to the side, and just kind of define what those different states are, which worked pretty well, but honestly, it, it took up a lot of space on your artboards and you ended up having kind of a mess and wasn't really the best way to manage your, your design file. So now with this new component states feature, which I'm gonna show you, uh, we can actually make all of this achievable with just one component rather than duplicating it twice as you see here. So let's just make a new artboard here and I'm gonna get rid of all these other guys. And now we're left with just this one component. So this one component actually contains all the information that we need. It's housing all these instances. So in this case, three different instances. If you come up to the top right here, you'll see this component tab. This actually shows you, here's your default state, here's your hover state, and here's your click state. So if I just kind of click through these, hover, see how it updated over here on the left? And if I hit this click tab, again, we have our click up here. So it's basically allowing you to kind of tab through each different instance or state um, pretty easily. And it's all contained in this one component. So let's test this component out in our preview window and see what actually is happening. I'm going to select my artboard, come up to our play button, our preview. And if I hover my mouse over this button, you see that there's a, uh, a different state occurring right here. So we've got our text moving to the left and we have an arrow appearing and we have kind of like a swiping motion happening in the background here. And then if I click, the button goes down a bit and it uh, turns to a gray color. So that's three different states within one component, which is pretty neat. All right, let's actually, let's recreate this button really quickly. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool in the top left and I'm just gonna drag and kind of come out this way. That looks pretty good. And let's get rid of this fill and give our border about two. Let's go to 100% white. So there's our container for our button and then I'm going to grab my text tool and just click and then type button 
Now, I'm not a fan of that font right now. I mean, Helvetic is great, but I'm not gonna use it for this. And let's go to white. And let's go to road, which is the font that I'm using over here. That's a little big. I think about a 12 should probably do it. There we go. And see how it's kind of like crunched in there. Let's actually give it a little bit more space. Um, let's turn it out a little bit more, maybe about what, 30? Nah, uh, maybe like a hundred. Hmm, 150. 150 will do it. So let me get rid of this other button just so we don't confuse ourselves. So there's gonna be a lot of layers going on here. Delete you. And now we can see we've got our button text up here in the top left and we've got a rectangle. So let's just call this um, outline and that's fine as button. So I'll shift click both of them, right click and hit group. And let's just call this button. So in order to convert this group into a component, we need to select it, right click, go down to make component. This will allow us to have different states housed within this component. So you saw over here on the right, you got this kind of blue highlighted section here. It's showing you that you've got a component. This is your master component. So this is the one that will sort of be the parent of everything else. Um, and then you've got a default state here. So default is what we're looking at. So let's go ahead and click this little plus icon and we're going to click, they have a pre-programmed um, state in here called hover state. So it's already got an action applied to it. We're going to go ahead and click that and we'll just leave it as hover state. That's fine. So now if you click between both of these, it's the same thing. And that's because we haven't actually done anything to the hover state tab here. So let's actually select our hover state and let's change what we want to actually happen. So I'm going to go ahead and select my text just kind of move it over a little bit. Now let's preview that. So if I select my button, go back to default, you can kind of see we've got two different sort of states here. I got our default and our hover. If I select my default and click the play button, you see it slides to the left. That's what we want. So that's looking good. Now we want this button to turn to white kind of like up here. So I'm going to make sure that my button is selected. I'm on hover state. And let's go ahead and double click in this component and get rid of the border and just click this fill. We'll go full white and then we'll click our button text and I'm just going to go to black. So let's go ahead and preview that real quick, going back to our default state and look at that. So now we can add that actual little arrow animation that you saw up here. So I'm just going to recreate this little arrow and then we're going to have it kind of slide in. So I'll go to my button and let's go to the default state, select our line tool and let's just draw a line and I'll make that about a two as well to kind of match the outside stroke. Let's make it, um, it's going to be black because it's going to be on top of that uh, white background. And then I'm going to grab my rectangle tool to make the little arrow part. Maybe like this, I'll rotate this guy and let's get rid of the border. I'll also make this black. And then let's just delete one point on the left side. So if you double click, you get these different little anchor points. I'm just gonna delete this last one. And I'm just gonna select him, maybe shrink him down a little bit more. And I might actually bring this point out a little bit to make it a little bit pointier. So that looks good. So let's select both of these and group them. We'll call this arrow. So I'm gonna grab my arrow, copy it, delete it, click my button, make sure I'm inside, because I want to I want to paste this within my component. Edit, paste. So now it's housed within this component. So let's just make sure that we're on our default state. And since we want this arrow to animate from left to right, we're gonna have to move it over. So let's slide it over and then just uh, turn the opacity all the way down. So let's go ahead and preview this and see if it's working. Let's um, make sure we're on our default state and then click the play button and just hover over our button. You See that? It's sliding out from the origin point that we set it on the default state. So it's at zero opacity here in the middle of the button. And when we hover, 
it goes to 100% opacity and slides to the right. And the reason why it's animating is because there's a default action set to this, which is auto animate. So if we go to our prototype tab up here, you can see that our default state has this auto animate applied to it. So it's easing out for a duration of 0.3 seconds. So you can kind of finesse this. We can go ease in and out. Maybe we want it to be a little slower, 0.5. And let's just see what happens with that. See, it's a little slower now. That might be too slow, but you can kind of like mess around with this feature and just see how you really want to kind of fine tune your animation here. So now that we have our default state and our hover state, let's add our click state. So I'm gonna select my button, come over to our hover, because this is where that action is gonna happen. You're gonna click on this hover state. So we're, that's why we have hover state selected. We're gonna add a new state by clicking the plus button. We'll just call this click or tap, whatever you wanna call it. So now that we're on this, we need to make something different about this button. So I'm gonna make it a little bit gray. And then I might move the entire button down about one, two, three pixels. So it looks like he pressed it. And let's go back to our hover because we need to actually tell this hover state button what the behavior is, like what's the action that's happening once you click. I'll go over to my prototype tab and let's add an interaction here. So we're gonna click this little plus button. This is add interaction. And the trigger is gonna be tap. So once you tap on this, you will auto animate and let's do about 0.2 seconds. And we're gonna to go to our click. So it's basically telling it, once you tap this button, auto animate to our click destination. So let's go ahead and test this. I'm gonna select my button, go to default state, click play button, hover's working. Now you see, you see that you have a little like hand letting you know that there's some interaction to be had here. Now I'll click and look at that. So there you have it. All that information is contained within this one component and it's not as messy as this. Um, and you can stretch this feature to do a lot more. This is kind of just scraping the surface. Here's a little mock-up I made just for fun to kind of test out these components and the different behaviors you can play around with. So here's some images from my recent Sedona trip with some friends. Um, I've got different sort of uh, interactions happening here. Hover states that go from like a multiply blending mode to a full color, um, some rotation uh, happening here. You got some scaling going on the logo, the button that we just made. So really you can do a lot with this and you know, I really want to see what you guys come up with. Definitely leave some comments and share some prototype links with me. It's just really cool to see how we can elevate our, our prototypes with these interactions. Thanks for watching guys.